Hi everybody, it's Caitlin here with my Diversathon wrap up. Alright, so I know this video is pretty late. Well, not excessively late. Just a little late. I said I was going to post it on Monday. But um, I don't know if you can tell by my voice, but I've been a little sick recently. And it's just been a crazy couple of weeks I've had like so I'm just gonna start off by saying that I didn't get to read Tar Baby which I'm super upset about because I was gushing about Toni Morrison in my last video where I just have to save this for another day I did get to read all all of these so that's good I make this video shorter because like I made my bluettes video and I didn't realize it was 10 minutes until I posted it and I was like it's a little long, so I'm going to try and be more brief with this. If you want to hear summaries of the books I'm about to review, go check my other video, my Diversathon TBR, because I give a little summary for everything. Everything I never told you. It was amazing. The character development especially was really, really cool. And they're like, there's this subtle incorporation of the experience of being a Asian and living in America, especially in, this takes place in the 70s, yeah, right. Um, and it just kind of, it incorporates all of these elements, like all of these family dynamics, all of this depth, and the writing itself was like really, really nice. I really appreciated Ng, Ng's writing. Um, the ending really got to me. It was just it grabbed my heart and just squeezed it because it isn't what I was expecting it to be and then I finally got to the ending and I was oh my gosh this is so good please read this I gave this a five out of five stars it was amazing the book I'm gonna talk about is Wave by Sonali Duranayagala I might be saying her last name wrong I need to look that up okay Sonali Durana Yigala. Durana Yigala. Now that that's cleared up, Sonali Durana Yigala. I just forgot. I'm... Why am I like this? I have mixed feelings about Wave because she had to go through and she managed to somehow make it through. Um, reasons this book is very sad. So obviously I wouldn't pick this up if you're a very happy person and want to read a happy book. Um, why the entire book felt repetitive. It's because, you know, grief is just this constant, you know, underlying feeling of sadness and unrest. Rating this as a book, not for her experience or for her, it just, it felt a little too redundant and like a lot of the same thing and I totally get why I'm not knocking the author at all or what she went through but this just wasn't my favorite I gave this three out of five stars now in my last video I said that a wave hit her hometown that is false I don't know why I said that it actually she was on vacation and it hit Sri Lanka while she was there on vacation with her family and her friend. Okay, just wanted to clear that up. Sonata for Rain by Rebecca Gonzalez. I I liked these poems. They were nice. I really enjoyed the juxtaposition of the Spanish and the English. It happened on a few pages where she had originally written it in Spanish and then translated it over and I thought that was really neat. A few poems in here that I absolutely just fell in love with. Whenever I read a book of poetry and I find certain poems that just really stick out to me, I fold over the corner and like, as you can, you probably can't see actually, I folded over the corners a lot in this book. Uh, my favorite poem that I read in here was called Retracing Oblivion. Um, I'm going to read you just a couple of lines from my favorite. Made down by the thought of leaving one last time. How we tried to remember how to say goodbye after hearing the ugly truths about each other. Eyes teared, shouted, what do we do? Embracing while the house caved in. 
Being said, there were a few poems that I just, I wasn't enthralled by, I wasn't amazed by, they felt, I don't know, it just, it wasn't very exciting for me as a person who reads a lot of poetry. This is kind of a collection where the poems are either really, really good or kind of unremarkable. So I ended up giving this one also a 3 out of 5 stars, but I still really enjoyed it. And you guys should all check Rebecca Gonzalez out. I actually tried to find Rebecca Gonzalez to email her because she's like a pretty small poet. Um, and I just wanted to tell her how much I loved Retracing Oblivion, but... I'm unable to find her email address or any way of contacting her. I even contacted the publishing, the people who published this collection, and they didn't know where she was either, so I'm kind of disappointed about that. Uh, the last book I read was A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry. It's the best play I have ever read, and I am so angry that I've never read it before, like that I didn't even know this existed. I could go on to a giant rant about the public school system and the books and plays they choose for us to read, but I'm not going to do that because this is a review and maybe I'll make a video ranting about that at some other point, but this is a review. It felt like this was so just achingly raw, you know, it was just very honest depicting the life of this African-American family, you know, in the 60s. Well, it was like 50s, but... Amazing how Hansberry incorporated the um, poem A Dream Deferred by uh, Langston Hughes. It's resurfacing in the family and like all of their underlying wants and needs. My stomach is growling. I finished reading this and I just sat there and I like knew it was my favorite play. It it bumped Oscar Wilde out of out of the spot. Sorry, importance of being your earnest. Raisin in the Sun is now killing my play game. I cannot talk this up enough. This was amazing. Anything I say about it will not do it justice. So if you haven't read a Raisin in the Sun, by Lorraine Hansberry, you need to do so. I gave it five out of five stars. I think this is especially relevant right now because of all of the turmoil going on for the black community right now and with racism that's obviously like still very blatant. And this is just amazing. I wish Lorraine Hansberry was still alive so that I could tell her how much I loved her play. Guys, so this was my Diversathon wrap up. I hope you guys liked this video and I hope you guys choose to read some or all of these books. If you've read any of these and you would like to discuss them, uh, also leave a comment below.